I was once an ex-offender. I used to sell drugs. I was a drug dealer. I began selling drugs, and then I began using drugs. I was addicted to heroin and going in and out of prison trying to support a drug habit. I was selling a lot of coke. At a young age, I was um, found guilty and convicted of a drug-related homicide. And um, you know, I served over 20 years in the penitentiary. When I see a flashback of my life with someone else, it immediately stops me dead in my tracks. And I tell them, this is not the life you want to live. This is not the life for you. This whole thing can be turned around. You can do this. It's possible. And you know how I know it's possible? Because I did it. I spent 17 and a half years in prison myself, and I came out and uh, I started this program to help people overcome the difficulties that I faced when I came out. To come home and trying to adapt to society is very difficult. Individuals are coming home truly unprepared. You have an individual that doesn't have any stability in the basic needs of any human being. These men and women are coming out of jail and they have nowhere to go. They're homeless. Some of them had to go back to drug infested houses. Finding employment is another difficult situation. When you're filling out applications, you have to check the box, you know, whether and tell them if you've been convicted of a crime. All of a sudden family members realize is that they got a burden in the house. Somebody that needs money and needs to eat and needs clothes. Healing justice you know you could give a person the food the clothes the shelter the details the medical attention bus cars bus tickets education but if they have not healed you know it's just an accident waiting to happen so they have to start thinking how am i to get back to the community now this is with anything it comes mm -hmm. within yourself you know what you want to do with your life it's about a renewing of the mind. You want to get, get out of that old mindset and, and transfer that energy into something positive. I, I found out that to be enveloped in pride, it doesn't work. To have all the answers, it doesn't work. Just sit back and listen. I got life parole. You be on parole, you got to make a decision about what battles to stay in, what battles to stay away from. You know, you can't walk around here looking for trouble. You can't walk around starting a lot of nonsense and think that you ain't going to find it because you will find it. A lot of guys came home and they dead. They got their brains blown out. Treatment works when you're willing and ready to work it. But treatment also gives a seed of hope. I don't get arrested anymore because I don't use. I have a disease of addiction. It's mind and mood altering. Just like a diabetic, my recovery, my disease my responsibility, nobody else's. The transitional housing phase was truly beneficial to me because it allowed me an opportunity to build up a foundation prior to actually having to fully re-enter society. I believe a peaceful setting, it brings about something internal. Now I have keys to an apartment building and I can put on my TV, I can play in my bed, I can go in my refrigerator. If you don't have family support, you have to have someone that you can go to and you can call on that's going to be in your corner. I have good friends. I've uh, removed myself from individuals that are not positive individuals. So I, I really had to almost recreate not only who I was, but also recreate the environment that I'm around in my free time. I did not do this alone. I had a sponsor. I had a network of people that had been in recovery. I had my church. Education allows you more choices, and it qualifies you, prepare you, that you can make qualified and educated decisions rather than a foolish decision. I actually got my master's, even though it's in social work, I'm kind of a policy guy. I, I went for uh, management and, and, and policy. Getting your certificate saying, okay, now I'm, I'm certified to do culinary, do cosmetology, to do construction, um, do electrical work. Many guys, they fall victim to nobody won't give me a job. Nobody won't give you? Give you? Get a squeegee in a bucket. White 
do windows, big business. There's so many different avenues to make money, even in a recession. It doesn't matter if you, you knock on 100 doors and, and everybody slams the door in your face. You got to get out and create your own job. I just bought a couple buckets of water ice, $20 each. Went out there on Broadway and Camden and started scooping water ice, a dollar of water ice. You know, made $50, then $100. Then I'm making, this is cash every day. So I put my money away, put the, uh, you know, started saving, put some in the bank, put some in my pocket, paid the child support. By the end of the summer, I'm making four or $500 a day in cash. You know, legal. I started designing gift baskets and I started being a party planner and I opened up my catering business. It's untapped talent, untapped potential that can be out there in the workforce making gainful employment, paying your fines, paying support. When we talk about working and guys will say, well, I ain't kissing nobody's, you know, yes, you will. It ain't all about your record. It's how you go for a job interview. And if you think you're going to go with your pants sagging to a job interview, that's what you're going to get back, nothing. It's like selling yourself. Whatever you want to do to get that job, you got to sell yourself to them. It's challenging. But then what was more challenging than me going to cop drugs and running from the cops? Having gone through that situation, I could be a mentor to help somebody else. Where I can be able to hold their hand and say, listen, brother, there is hope. Listen, man, there, there, there is another way to make money without, um, you know, hitting the block or, or, or going back to your old ways. I wrote uh, three books uh, directed towards men and women in prison, coming out of prison. Uh, how to do good after prison. Uh, how to love and inspire your man. To give back and let these girls know. You could be a broken down junkie whore and get clean, because I was once there. If I could save or help one man to get out so that he can take care of his family and keep them out, that's, that's, what, that's what I want to do. You have to support these organizations that are at grassroots level working with the people, treating the treatment. Within the prison, all we see is failure. So if all you ever see is people walk out the gate and fail, you think that that's the only thing that's available to you. So we think it's really important for people that did get out and are making it um, to be very visible. Bottom line is, if you don't do something to, to ease up all these uh, barriers and restrictions on people who are trying to do the right thing, that keeps kicking them back down, then public safety is going to suffer and people are going to suffer. Our statistics show that long incarcerations, and particularly incarcerations for nonviolent drug offenders, does not make us safer, does not make our communities healthier, and does not prepare a person to come and take his or her rightful place in society. We're just advocating for those who want to make a change in their life, who want an opportunity. I know there's a lot of guys out here who want to try to do, try to do the right thing. And a lot of people who don't know anything about ex-offenders or offenders and stuff like that, they may think they're, they lie, they don't want to turn their life around. It, it's not true. There's always, always a chance. I was 30 years old when I changed my life around. Well, I was about 25, but I was still in prison. I was determined when I came home that I was never coming back to this place. Um, I was determined to make a change. And I recognize that there's going to be some things that are not going to be in agreement with me. So what do I do? I just work through it. You know, I cope. You work, you get blessings. That's how I look at it. Life you got to work for. Blessings you got to work for. If you put the action and effort into it, you're going to get blessings. There is hope. And it's all about hope and it's all about believing. But understand one thing, nothing comes easy. If you want it, you got to work for it. So that's what we do. We work hard. I'm not going to violate the law. I'm not going to start using drugs. I'm not going to abuse women, abuse society. So success to us that have served tremendous amounts of time, you know, in the penitentiary is staying free, staying healthy, wearing clean clothes, having a roof over your head, staying strong, being happy, enjoying your life, eating good, living good, and that's success. I don't have a lot of money. I mean, I have a home, I have, but I have family, and I have grandchildren, and I have that sort of richness in the life that most men in prison say they want. This experience in the prison made me want to continuously every day be a better human being. I think that's a great thing that if each one of us can just do that. We all talk about the same thing and want to do the same thing. If someone could look at us and say, he did it, why can't I do it? 
and then go on to, to start doing it. That's the most important thing. If we didn't have to say anything in our life, that's the most important thing. Having no paper problems, just burgeoning the town with bucks from living grimy in the streets of 22s on the truck from having no weeds in the fence of daily outings to lunch. I wonder, could this be the fee for me? Taking penitentiary chances, stuffing keys for me. What is it? I mean, what it do? Got my mind tripping. Is this what love do? Yo, I call my lady a queen. I give her everything. That's how you treat the first lady when you've been crowned king. Give her nothing but the best, nothing more, nothing less. To save her last breath, I will give her my death. For better or worse, I put my lady in first I'll never be ashamed to mention my lady in verse I'm trying to be a better man And just trying to be the man God damn, I'm being all that I can Yo, I talked to this one love She said I was the best It was like an elephant Just stepped off my chest I was like, ah I can finally breathe And she said I love the fact You got a trick up your sleeve 